Okay, so we just got done doing some work on the Tiger Diorama. So, after some fairly heavy use on my airbrush, I like to tear it down and give it a good cleaning, um, especially the nozzles, the, the cap, the tip, the needle, anything like that, because you have buildup um, that accrues on your brush now you should you should clean out your needle and everything um, fairly often after every use but but for me what I like to do is um, tear it down and get it cleaned out after every so often oh probably once a week if I'm doing some heavy modeling so let's go ahead and get started so we're gonna take off the back end we're gonna hold take off the tightening nut and take out our needle this is the most important part, in my opinion, that you need to take care of. That needle is what helps atomize your paint. Okay, so we'll do that. We're going to take off our um, brush mechanism or the the spraying portion in the back. Now this is what pulls back your brush, and then we just pop out, pop out the trigger. We're going to take our cap off. I'm going to take our nozzle off, and then using, where did I put that, there it is. And I just got some new needles and everything in today that we're going to go over a little bit later. So, we're also going to take out our, our tip. The tip is literally that big. Now on the back of that there is an o-ring, you need to be careful with those. You need to be very careful with those. So with a tip like that, um, you can do uh, some soap and water. That's all that I would recommend. I wouldn't soak it in anything heavy. So with that, we're going to go ahead and pop off our needle. There we go. Or excuse me, we're going to pop off our the, the, the tip. So again, if you look right here, there's your O-ring, that black piece. I'm going to set that aside. Okay, so then what we're left with is the body. So this is the component that uh, we needed to take care of as well. So this right here is what the trigger pushes back on and there's a spring in there that returns it to its normal position. And this right here is what holds the needle in place. So as you push that back, it's going to push the needle back. So let's go ahead and tear that down. Take that off, we'll take that off, we'll take our spring off. Okay, this is everything that is on your um, airbrush. Now this is the Master G23. This is, it may look different in some other brushes. This is based off of mine. This is the Master G23 airbrush. This is a gravity fed. Gravity fed means it's coming down from below. If it was a siphon, it'd be sucking it up through a tube and a glass jar. So I've got in here a little bit of alcohol. And we're gonna take a toothbrush and we're gonna lay down a couple of Scott's paper towels. Now I love using Scott's paper towels. These are mechanic. Um, these are mechanics towels. They are lint, lint free. So let's move everything out of the way. Go ahead and put that right there so we can put our components on. That way you get a better view compared to this black background. I should have thought of that before. I apologize. Okay, so we got our needle. We've got our tip. We've got all of our other components. Now this little wrench is handy to have. This is what you can use to tighten and loosen your uh, tips. So, put that there. So we're gonna take a little bit of alcohol and we're gonna clean off the body. Now this is why I like to use a water-based paint. Easy to clean. But having alcohol um, really helps with the cleaning process. Um, you can also use a paint thinner, paint stripper, something like that. But I want to stress, be careful with these black O-rings. 
they will, alcohol can eat away at rubber. So you have to be exceptionally careful. That's why I recommend uh, some water and some Dawn dish detergent. So just cleaning it off, you know, it, some people say, oh, why bother cleaning off the outside? Take care of your brushes. Um, having been in the army for seven years, the biggest thing uh, that we did, especially when we were in Iraq, you know, is having, making sure that your weapon is maintained. So, you know, that may be a little bit extreme in thinking, but take care of your equipment, plain and simple. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You take care of your equipment, it's going to last for a good long time. Okay, so put that in there and just kind of rinse, so just kind of let that soak off a little bit. Um, let it run through. So we're also going to take care of the cup. It looks like my dog has come in to, to say hi. Don't get into the stuff, Rashi. Sorry, she made her appearance known. One of these days we'll show her in a video. So we got everything on there. Got this clean out. Now, for the hopper. Um, this is where a nice pair of tweezers come in, comes into play. So, um, you can use a pair of tweezers, just like this. Uh, that's why I like having long, angled tweezers. So take and fold this down a little bit. And then I will actually take and wrap that around and dip it in. Dip it in the alcohol and then go into the hopper and run that around. Kind of clean off the side. Now here's the important part. Right down in there, you want to get that all cleaned off. And that is where your paint is going to be forced into the nozzle. So you want to get that cleaned out because you don't want your paint colors to mix, you know, especially if you're using a dark color and then you start using a light color. Made that mistake, uh, so I'll save you some time on that. So clean that out. Okay. So that is all clean, cleaned out. Uh, we're going to also run a little bit. We're going to run this down into the back side of this. So paint can, can accumulate in this area. So, um, I like to give that a good cleaning as well. All right, there we go. So once that's done, let's set that aside. We're going to let that, we're going to let the alcohol evaporate and we're going to let that dry. So go ahead and clean the backside of this with that as well. Now, the needle, take an alcohol, take some, uh, take a, a little bit of a rag or an alcohol swab and run it up and down the needle. I want to stress, do not bend this tip and please be very careful when you're cleaning this off. That is a very sharp point. Um, I don't want anybody to get hurt. But that is very clean now. So we'll set that to the side. Take our other components and just wipe them down. Uh, make sure that all the paint is off. Be very careful with this. Uh, this can actually pop off. That is what your trigger presses against. So, got that one cleaned off. Get this piece cleaned off as well. The trigger. Well, the trigger can accumulate quite a bit, so we're definitely going to take and brush that down a little bit. Okay. Nozzle. Very, very important. That nozzle is what helps to atomize your paint. This will, you'll get, you'll get, uh, accumulation in the tip and it's going to cause a lot of problems so we'll make sure we clean that on the inside clean that out on the outside there we go let that dry clean off our spring clean off our cap now the cap 
can accumulate pretty quick. So we'll just take the brush and do that. Now, your tip. If you're careful enough, you can brush it off the excess paint without touching that o-ring. Okay. So from there, we'll go ahead and start putting it back together. So very carefully, thread your tip back into the back into the body of the airbrush. You don't want to tighten it too much, but you want to have it enough that it's not going to come off. Okay. Nozzle. Put our nozzle on. Take our cap. Cap back on. Let's go ahead and get the trigger assembly back together. Take our spring. Put that back in. Take our tensioner, put that back on. Put on our tension nut. There we go. Now, being mindful of this component, carefully go in. So it's best to come at an angle and then up. Then we're going to go ahead and tighten. We're going to thread that into place. Okay. Now, that little piece that, that moves around freely, pull that back. Simple as that. Pull it back. Use your fingernail. Find the notch that that little piece is going to go in. You'll feel it fall into place fairly quickly. There we go. Now... Let me take that back out because I'm going to show you a little something here. This opening, that is where your needle goes through. So we'll take that, we're going to put that back into position. Sometimes it can be difficult getting back into place. There we go. Take our needle and carefully put it in the back side. Now, if there's any sort of, of, of obstruction, be extremely careful. Take it back out. Take it apart if you need to. Goes through. Now, this is what you want to see in your nozzle. There's your tip right there. There's the needle. It may be a little bit hard to see. Now, that will put push any excess paint that was still in the nozzle out. And there's our needle. Tighten down, and then tighten down the nut. Put your cap back on. Put the back back on to protect everything. You're all set. That is a good, thorough, deep cleaning of your airbrush to do every once in a while. So, um... Again, this is based off of a G23 Master Airbrush. So some of you may have something completely different like an Iwata, um, a Neo, anything like that. This is based off of the Master G23. So uh, one last thing that we have to clean is going to be the cap. So definitely paint will accumulate at the top of this. There's a little breather hole right there that you need to clean off. Uh, because what happens is if too much pressure form uh, builds up in your hopper, this will pop off. I've had it happen numerous times. Keep the cap clean. I will say this again. Keep your cap clean. So we'll go ahead and brush that out. Get a little bit more cleaning in there. If you have to let it soak in the alcohol, definitely do that. You know, you want to make sure that your components are clean. And that you're not that it's not going to risk any problems. It's not going to risk any excessive pressure buildup, and then you're going to have a problem. So we'll dip it in there just real quick. Okay, a little bit more. Um, I definitely recommend having an old toothbrush. This 
is a must. I will not have anything to do with modeling and my supplies unless I have a good toothbrush. Okay. Let's wipe that down. Okay. A little bit there, a little bit there. Some on the outside of the rim. Get a little bit of build up on the on there. So, once you're done with that, take your razor and carefully, again, you're working with a sharp object, please be careful. Clean it on the outside, inside, clean it on the outside. From there, there you go. You're all set. So, um, use this video as, um, as educational, as a tear down. Um, the principle behind airbrushes is pretty much the same, maybe a different design, but take care of your brushes. They'll take care of you. We'll see you down the road.